Hi, Michael Lasky here at Olasky Martial Arts in Burbank, California with your kickboxing combination of the week. This week we're going to work on the spin back fist. Now the spin back fist is a much coveted martial art move, not only in Muay Thai but in MMA as well. Uh, it tends to be a very big fan favorite and on top of that it's freaking cool. So. The thing with a spin back fist is that any, any semi-competent five-year-old in a tutu who could do a 360 can spin around and stick out their hand and, and do something similar. The thing with the spin back fist is that it has to be applied properly. So that's what we're going to do here today. Apply it within a combination so that it can uh, get you guys more success. Let's try it out. Okay, so let's just start off with where every single punching maneuver actually comes from which is appropriate and proper footwork. Okay, so how we're going to actually execute um, this spin back fist is very similar to or what we're going to do is use the function of the jab as its catalyst. So when you're doing a regular jab, everybody knows that as you step forward, that's where the jab happens. So that the entire body is moving behind that jab. You lay your entire body into it. With this motion, I'm actually going to have you, instead of stepping straight forward, you're going to take that front leg and step out at a 45 degree angle. Okay, so we're used to jabbing forward like this, but now we're actually just going to take that 45 degree angle and punch out to the side. Your opponent's still in front of you, but you're purposefully missing in this case. What taking this 45 degree angle does is it helps you shift your body so that the turn maneuver with that back fist tends to happen a lot quicker and with less telegraphing of movement. So what the jab, what we're going to do is a double jab, and on that second jab, you're going to turn to the side. So you step one, turn to the side, and purposefully miss that second jab. So it goes one, two. And then you pick up that rear leg, spinning all the way around, and landing that spin back fist. So you step forward, step at a 45 degree angle out, continue that rotation all the way around with the back with the back foot, and then swinging all the way through with that spin back fist. Now, ideally you want to spot, you want to look for the jaw, things like that. As far as placement goes, sometimes it's a back fist, sometimes you hit with the rear forearm. Generally anything that you can get skin to skin contact on is, is going to be a successful move for this. So it goes one and two, 45 degrees out, rotate all the way around with that, bringing it all the way back. One and two, all the way around. Okay, so from that what we're going to do next is show you the application on the pads so you guys can drill it and then we'll show you the practical application which is, is what you're going to do in sparring. Okay, so we're back now so that we can actually show you how this will be applied on the pads. Just doing those first couple movements that we just drilled in the air through shadow boxing, we're going to now apply that to pads so you can drill that out, get a little sweat going with it. So just using those three movements, you're going to throw that first jab and hit it just as you would any other jab on any other pad combination. The second jab is actually going to cross all the way through that 45 degree step. You're going to hit nothing with that. One and two. That's where that comes from. One and two. One and two. Now as we did in shadow boxing, continue all the way through with that motion, ending in that successful spin back fist. So, step forward and jab, 45 and jab, step all the way through with that rear leg, with that spin back fist. So moving here, we've got one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Notice how that step aids in the spin. You shouldn't feel dizzy and you shouldn't feel like you have to spin all the way around to get that accomplished. Okay? Once you guys have mastered that combination, we'll move on to something slightly longer. So we'll go jab, cross, then we'll hook to the cross and now you're going to step forward with that jab and end it in the exact same way that we practice. So once again, jab, cross, Hook, cross, step at that 45 degree angle, and hit all the way through. So at speed it goes one, two, three, four, five, and hit. 
One, two, three, four, five, and six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. One, two, three, four, five, and eight. Okay? So drill that a couple times. Get used to really putting a little bit of oomph in that. Also spotting your target, knowing where your opponent is, so that you can get a little bit of accuracy with that backhand. Okay, so now let's move into practical application when it comes to sparring. Because pads are one thing, obviously live sparring is another. I find that I, it's very difficult for me personally to be able to land a spinning back fist let's say in the middle of the ring. Uh, my spin tends to be a lot slower than their ability to run backwards or at least get out of range enough to where they can sway back and be missed either way. So I prefer to execute this move um, when I have blocked his ability to move back. In this case it would be against, we're doing it a wall here, but it would be a cage or the side of the ring or what have you. Okay? So now that I've limited his ability to move back by pushing him up against the cage, um, his, net, his motions now are only left and right. Okay? Now any good coach or, or MMA fighter knows that if you're going to circle out of any predicament such as this, ideally you want to circle away from the strong hand. He doesn't want to move into where my power hand is going to be. So his natural inclination is going to be the opposite. He's going to want to move away from that. Now as he moves away from that, you will see that that moves just into the line of fire of where my spin back fist is going to go. So as I do the combination, it will go one, two, one, two, 45 degree step out, and then that's where that spin back fist has landed. So it goes one, two, one, two, spin out. 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 Now, a key to remember, guys, is it's gonna be very tempting for you to want to just throw that last hook in anyways. When you figure, why not? See if you can get it. One, two, one, two, three. But I still need you to purposefully miss with that hook going through. The reason why is if I go one, two, one, two, three, I've already limited my spinning momentum, thereby slowing down where the spin back fist is going to come from. It also confuses him timing-wise to purposefully miss, because it happens so fast. Usually you'll punch on a cadence, and this is going to mix up that cadence, allowing him to be more open. So it goes one, two, one, two, step to the side, and hit. Also, when I miss this second hook, I've cornered him off, making his escape only one direction, even if he were to be a bad fighter and move into my strong hand. So again, jab, cross, hook, cross, miss, and hit. Jab, cross, hook, cross, miss, and hit. Jab, cross, hook, cross, miss, and hit. All right, guys, so that's the tutorial when it comes to the spin back fist. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and subscribe. We're going to do new combinations every week, similar in form and function to this. Also, uh, leave your comments and video responses. I want to see if this is working out for you guys in sparring, what's giving you guys problems, and then maybe I can help you out further, or you can even give me advice. I always enjoy learning. The key is, of course, keep your hands up, always by your chin. I drop it a lot so you can see my pretty face when I speak, and, you know, I'm a bit, I have a bit of hubris like that. Um, but other than that, guys, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, come, come back and see me next week.